Hi there. My name is Sharon Draper, and I am here today for Simon & Schuster's Read and Learn Project. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of this. Uh, if you've never heard of me, I am the lady who wrote Out of My Mind, which a couple of people have read, and I also wrote a book called Blended, which I'm very proud of, and I've written, oh, I don't know, maybe 30 other books, but the one we're going to talk about today is a book called Stella by Starlight. Let me tell you a little bit about how that story got started. A lot of times people want to know, what made you write that book? What gave you the idea? Stella by Starlight takes place in North Carolina, in the South, in 1932. Uh, I was not born in 1932, uh, but my father was. Well, he wasn't born then, but he lived in North Carolina in 1932. And when I was a little girl, he would always tell us stories about what it was like growing up on the farm in North Carolina. Every summer we would go and visit and we would visit with my grandmother and I learned how to uh, get eggs from the chickens. You have to be very careful because they'll bite you. And I learned how to milk a cow, not as easy as it seems. Uh, I learned how to clean up the chicken coop, which is a stinky, horrible mess. Um, and I learned to listen to stories. My grandmother was a storyteller. She would sit around and after dinner, we'd sit down and she'd just tell a story. Let me tell you this story. And it may have been true and it may not have been true, who knows, but it was always a very good story. So, um, and then on the weekends, all her friends would come over and they'd sit on the porch and probably around six, seven o'clock at night, and they would all have a storytelling session every Saturday night. And I'm just a little girl, so I'm sitting there hoping they don't make me go to bed because sometimes those stories got really, really good. But I would sit every Saturday night and listen to my grandmother and her friends tell stories. So the story of Stella by Starlight happened partly because I listened to so many stories. And no, I did not write them down while I was listening to them. I just listened and hoped I wouldn't be sent to bed. Um, but the stories stayed with me. My father told me stories. My mother told me stories. So Stella by Starlight takes place on a farm in North Carolina not very different from my grandma's farm because that was all I knew what it looked like where there was lots of freedom to run and explore you didn't have to wear shoes if you didn't want to you could go in the woods you could go fishing you could hang out all day it was a wonderful wonderful summer vacation for a little girl um, so when I grew up and started writing I wanted to write a book that would honor my mother my grandmother and my father and their storytelling. So that's how Stella by Starlight came up. Stella is a completely fictional character. She's not real, I made her up. I never knew a person named Stella, although my grandmother's name was Estelle. So I kind of used that, a part of her name. But Stella is a little girl who lives in a little bitty town in North Carolina. Uh, storytellers come to her house on a regular basis. Things are difficult for her. They're, they don't have a whole lot of money and they have to make do. Her mother cooks everything. They have to go out in the garden and pull up the carrots and then clean the carrots and then cook the carrots for dinner. There was no grocery store to go and buy a bag of carrots or a bag of potatoes. Everything they ate, they had to grow or keep from year to year. So life wasn't easy, but it was fun and it was enjoyable. The most enjoyable thing was on Saturday night when Spoon Man would come. Spoon Man was this storyteller that traveled on a buggy with an old donkey and he came around and he, when he came to town, it was a time for celebration. So I'm going to read the chapter in Stella by Starlight where uh, Spoon Man comes to visit and he tells a story. 
Now, if you notice this book that I'm reading from, this is tabbed. This is a brand new book and it's all pretty. This is a well-read book. A well-read book has tabs and markers and I've marked the good places and I've marked the funny places and I've marked the places that, um, that I like to remember. So I'm going to tell the story that, now I lost my page, of, of how it was for Stella that night. So Spoon Man has come to town. Spoon Man is a traveling storyteller. He's kind of like HBO, Netflix, because that's all they had. He came and he brought stories. So it was a celebration when Spoon Man came to town. They stayed up late and everybody brought food. And at the very peak of darkness, Spoon Man would tell his story. So I'm going to read you the story that Spoon Man told the people that night. Once long, long ago, he began, there was a noble eagle who laid three eggs. She carefully set them in her nest atop the tallest mountain. She watched those eggs and she kept them warm and she loved her little nestlings even before they hatched. But one day a great storm raged around the mountaintop. The winds blew something first and heavy rains pelted the eagle in her nest. Thunder crashed, lightning crackled, or an earthquake rocked the earth while the whole world shook with the power of that storm. The mother eagle did all she could to protect her eggs, but during the height of that storm, one of those eggs was blown out of the nest and it rolled swiftly down that mountain. The mother eagle squawked and cried out, but there was nothing she could do except try to protect the two eggs that remained. The storms ended, the rain stopped, the sun came out, but the egg was gone and the mother eagle was heartbroken. Now that egg that fell didn't break, no ma'am and no sir, it came to rest in the garden of the farm at the base of the mountain. The next morning, the farmer noticed the unusual egg. He picked it up and placed it in the next nest of his favorite chicken. The mother hen clucked a little, but she made room for that egg. A few days later, scratch, scratch, peep, peep, the three little chickens poked their way out of the shells. On the fifth day, the strange large eggs began to shudder and crack until a gigantic chick emerged from that shell, wide-eyed and doing more squawking than peeping. Gradually, it too began to explore the farmyard. The three little chicks were pretty gold and yellow color, but the larger chick was pure white with large, dark, curious eyes. His beak was black instead of yellow, and so were his claws. He was a clunky, awkward little fella, but the mama chicken didn't mind. She loved him and took care of him no matter what. As the chicks got older, the baby eagle grew increasingly discontented. His sisters grew to be plump yellow chickens, and his brother into a rusty red rooster, but the baby eagle had lost all his feathers and he had turned into a sleek golden brown bird, so much taller and stronger than all the other chickens. His brothers and sisters ignored him. Finally, one bright day, the young eagle looked up and saw something soaring high above. It was sleek and black. It glided on the currents of the wind, swooping and turning with the breeze. Oh my, said the young eagle, I wish I could do that. His brother, the rooster, cackled, you can't do that, you're a chicken. And everybody knows that chickens can't fly. The young eagle tucked his head, head in his wings. But the mama chicken walked over to him in that funny little strut, chicken strut. And she said, son, do you really want to fly? Oh yes, mama, I wish I could fly like that great bird I saw in the fly. Then you must fly, the mother chicken said. But I can't, I'm a chicken. No, son, you've never been a chicken, and you have always been meant to fly. Now get up on that stump. The little eagle leaped up on the stump. He fell down in the dirt. He jumped again. He fell once more. Then he tried something he'd never done before. He unfurled his wings, and he flapped as he jumped. And to his shock and delight, he felt himself lift into the air. He landed on that stump with ease and looked back at the mama chicken wide-eyed. Goodbye, my child, the mama chicken said. Find your family, find your destiny, find your wings. The young eagle flew effortlessly to the top of the fence and then the top of the house. He looked at the wide blue sky, took a deep breath and leaped off. He, he glided and swooped. He screeched in delight. The mama eagle heard 
that sound, that screech. You know why? Because mothers always know the voice of their children. Spoonman settled back down. He said the mother eagle flew out to greet her baby with great joy and brought him back to the top of the mountain where he belonged. I'm an eagle, the young bird said triumphantly, and I was born to fly. At that moment, Stella almost felt like she could fly herself. That's just a tiny excerpt from Stella by Starlight. She has a lot more adventures and a few more stories that she learns. But she grows up to be, I guess she grew up to be my grandma, I don't know. But Stella grew up to be a happy young girl who learned a lot of life lessons. We can learn a lot from reading historical fiction. I love reading historical fiction because I learn about history through a story and I don't have to worry about reading a, an encyclopedia. So thank you so much for being with me today and I hope you enjoyed Stella by Starlight. My name is Sharon Draper. Thank you.